Good afternoon, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Father God, we do want to ask your hand of mercy and grace upon our time in prayer and your time and your word through prayer. You're a great God and you've given us a great word and your word is sufficient for all matters of life and doctrine. So we pray as we look into your word, you would help us to come to grips with your truth and understand it in a wonderful way in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Uh, the other day, while looking at some Facebook posts, I saw a pastor named Christopher Pandolfi, and he was talking about the sufficiency of Scripture, the Word of God. And I thought, uh, amen. I do fear that the esteem, the reverence, and the complete sense of trust of the scriptures has been greatly diminished in our day. And I'm going to give you a, a prime example of this, an, a, an example that I think might surprise some of you. I hope, hopefully it doesn't surprise everybody, but what day was Jesus really crucified? What day? So we celebrate Good Friday, but we understand that in the scriptures, Friday is not mentioned. I know some of you may be saying, well, Pastor John, why didn't you put this up on Good Friday? Well, I'll tell you, one reason is because we understand that there are some traditions that have been ongoing literally for centuries. And sometimes in the midst of a tradition, People aren't always thinking with the greatest clarity. They're not because the tradition has kind of swept them up. So hopefully now in June, as we talk about the day identified as Good Friday, we might be able to see where scripture has been set aside and tradition has superseded biblical text, biblical revelation. So we start with 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I will submit to you that I, Pastor John Davis, do not believe that Jesus Christ was crucified on a Friday. I do not believe that. I'll explain that in a few moments, but I also want to read this passage here. In Hebrews chapter five, verse nine, and having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him, called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Just by way of introduction, you could see that the rite of Hebrews makes a distinction between those who can handle uh, truth that has depth, truth that has substance, truth that is not superficial, but has some intricacies and complexities in the scripture. I myself uh, in previous uploads have recommended the consistent systematic reading of the Bible from cover to cover. Let me just say this. Uh, again, if you listen to the Bible on an audio app, it is approximately 72 hours. That means if you just put on an app and read along with it every three days, you would cover the entire Bible. Again, if you put on the app and just listen to it, you would cover the Bible every three days. 
When people say they read to understand, we realize there are many passages in the scripture that we don't understand at first. But I would submit to those who are willing to broaden their biblical horizon, so to say, that like any particular craft, you don't spend hours learning about the hammer and hours about the screwdriver. In carpentry, you learn about all of the tools. And as you learn and utilize, you start to grow in familiarity and, and knowledge and adeptness. The more we read the entirety of scripture, pieces of the divine puzzle start to fall into place simply because of our, our familiarity with passages. Somewhat of a long-winded inter introduction, but to get to the point at hand, I do not believe Jesus was crucified on a Friday. Now this is, I believe, more significant than people would want to admit. One of the reasons why the world, one of the reasons why the world has difficulty is because with difficulty in believing the Bible, I'm going to say it's because certain presentations of the Bible just do not really seem to make logical sense. I'm not talking about the supernatural and miracles. That's above logic. I wouldn't say illogical, but above logic. But I'd like to point this out. So Jesus Christ says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, other passages talk about three days, but in this passage, he says three days and three nights. So the problem then becomes if Jesus is crucified on a Friday, well, we have those theories about part of the day and this part counted as a day and a night, uh, but it just does not really seem to be consistent with the three days and three nights and comparing it to the prophet Jonah. So Friday morning is a day, Saturday morning, but he wasn't really crucified Friday morning. So we're kind of in the evening. Then Sunday, there's, he's early in the morning. Where do we get a third night? So I'm going to submit to you. Let me say this again. I'm going to submit to you that the Bible has given us the answer. The Bible has given us the answer. And this is a case of where one, if we are not consistently reading scripture, we may overlook these truths. I would, I would submit to you that this was not an original thought with me, but the moment it was revealed, I said, it makes absolute perfect biblical consistent sense, perfect biblical sense. So let's take away the Friday for a moment. Who is Jesus? He's the son of God. Amen. He's the redeemer. Amen. He's the deliverer. Amen. He is also the lamb of God. Amen. Amen. The lamb of God. Now we realize that that has to be one of the most profound and one of the most consistent identifications of our Savior. Well, if we went back to the first Passover, amen, I'm already getting a little excited. If we went back to the first Passover, we might be amazed to discover 
that Jesus Christ was actually crucified on a Thursday. Really, Pastor John? The Bible doesn't mention Thursday by name. You're absolutely right. The Bible does not mention Friday by name either. It doesn't mention Saturday or Sunday by name. It talks about the first day of the week. It talks about the Sabbath. So let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Now we read this. Remember now, this is going to be something for those who can handle some solid food. Jesus is identified as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Gospel of John, chapter 1, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. We'll find that in Revelation. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. Now please understand, verse 3, on the tenth day of the month. Okay. Well, the 10th could fall on any particular day. It could fall on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, but on the 10th day of the month, every man shall take a lamb and bring it into his house. Okay. Follow this now. Suppose the 10th happens to fall on a Sunday in one particular year. Well, that's interesting because if the 10th falls on a Sunday, Jesus Christ enters Jerusalem on a Sunday, which we traditionally celebrate as Palm Sunday. Interesting. So if the lamb is brought into the house on the 10th day and Jesus is brought into Jerusalem on the 10th day, there is definitely some symbolism here. We have the imagery of the Savior as a lamb coming into his house, as it were, Jerusalem on the 10th day, which would be a Sunday. Well, that's interesting. We read on in this Exodus chapter 12 passage. And if the household, verse four, and if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house, take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, you know, that's Jesus, a male of the first year. We know that's Jesus. Amen. You may take it from the sheep or the goats. Amen. Now notice verse six. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the month. Then, a whole, then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Mm. 14th day. Let's do some biblical math. Sunday is the 10th. Monday would be the 11th. Tuesday would be the 12th. Wednesday would be the 13th. Thursday would be the 14th. Now, please understand, I'm going to say this several times. Sunday, the 10th, Jerusalem, the lamb comes in, Jesus, the Passover lamb into his house, Jerusalem. Palm Sunday, the 10th, Monday, the 11th, Tuesday, the 12th, Wednesday, the 13th, Thursday, the 14th, crucifixion at twilight, the whole assembly at the cross. Interesting. Well, now, if Jesus is crucified on a Thursday, 
the statement by our beloved savior of three days and three nights actually makes perfect sense. Crucified Thursday at twilight. We have him in the tomb Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Three nights. Killed at twilight on the 14th day, that Thursday. Well, now we have him in the tomb Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning because he rises early Sunday morning. I don't want to belabor this, but I'll repeat it again so you can follow the, the biblical math, as it were, the biblical chronology. And I want to emphasize again, Friday is not mentioned in the Bible, but we do have some numerical evidence that lends much more biblical support which seems much more biblically consistent, much more biblically reasonable. Traditions are stooped in our church. Why do we have communion once a month? Think about it. Every time they met, they broke bread. At our particular congregation, I learned that just going to another church. They said they have it every Sunday. And I said, why don't we have it every Sunday? Why don't we? It says, they continued steadfastly in apostles doctrine, breaking of bread, apostles doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. So we have traditions in our church that we don't even know where they came from. There's no place where communion is served once a month in the sense of specifically mentioned in the Bible as often as you do it. If you choose to do it once a month, then it's as often. You could do it twice a month, four times a month, every time you meet. Amen. So again, the 10th, the Passover lamb brought into the household on the 10th. Palm Sunday, Jesus triumphant entry into, entry into Jerusalem. 10th is a Sunday. 11th is a Monday. 12th is a Tuesday, Wednesday the 13th, Thursday the 14th, Thursday killed at twilight, the whole assembly of the congregation, verse 6 of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Isn't that interesting? Notice the parallels. So many parallels in this Exodus passage with Jesus. We realize that this whole idea of even Easter is laced with tradition. We, we have no consistent in one sense of Easter. We call it Easter. It's really Resurrection Sunday if we wanted to title it. So we, we realize that that holiday, like Christmas, like Christmas, we know it's not December 25th. But we go along with it. We're not trying to reinvent the entire Christian calendar. But we also want to make sure that we can explain to the world and even to novice believers. There's going to be enough difficult portions of scripture. Oh, yes, there's some difficult portions. But they may not be as numerous as one may think. Final summation, the 10th day of the month, Jesus enters Jerusalem, symbolic of the Passover lamb. 10th is a Sunday, 11th is a Monday, 12th is a Tuesday, Wednesday the 13th, 14th Thursday, Jesus crucified at twilight on Thursday, we have him in the grave Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. We have him crucified at twilight on Thursday. We have him in the grave Friday morning, Saturday morning, and Sunday morning. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, Jesus specifically mentions three days and three nights. 
So I hope this has given us some some food for thought. I I now I want to just introduce this. My next upload will be about Melchizedek. My next upload will be about Melchizedek. That is why I did introduce that passage because you could see I wanted to at least wet our appetites that there are there are pictures there are threads of imagery in scripture that me we may overlook but really are quite revealing i'm going to wet your appetite by telling you that i do not believe melchizedek was a pre-incarnate uh, appearance of Jesus Christ. I will tell you on our next upload who I believe Melchizedek to be according to the scripture. And I hope you could see that even with this particular presentation that what is traditionally thought does not make it right even just because it's been practiced or believed for centuries. Sometimes we just go along with tradition to go along with it. On that note, may God grant us the wisdom, the perseverance, the diligence to explore scripture in depth with a systematic approach and with a willingness to reform, transform, previous notions when they do not parallel and agree with the word of God. Be blessed in Jesus. Be blessed in Jesus. Have a wonderful day in Jesus name. Amen.